Hey everyone, welcome back to another Python programming tutorial video. In the last couple of videos and tutorials, we've been looking at this PXSSH module. And that was really cool because it allowed us to connect to an SSH server or uh, any, any other computer online on the internet that is running at SSH. So we were able to create this little object that allows us to kind of manipulate our SSH utility. It's kind of like a controller or a manager for us. And then we were able to log in a to a specific server or uh, anywhere else on the web. We've been using Over the Wire's Bandit accounts for their Bandit uh, war, uh, war game and the Bandit user. It uh, has a Bandit Zero username and the Bandit Zero password. So we were able to log in just fine. And we've been testing out different options and different properties and attributes that this S object has. But this time, we actually want to look at the cool stuff that this does. We actually want to be able to send commands to SSH and see their output and see what we're actually doing on the server. So this is pretty simple, right? All it takes is a send command, a send function. And you can see the description here, send s. This function will take one argument s, which is the string that it gives to the child process. It will return the number of bytes that are written to it. And if a log file is specified within the s object or a manager, a copy is written to that log. So Let's actually just give it a command. Uh, let's say echo subscribe. <laughs> you know, a uh, nice, uh, nice little thing there. So, Okay, cool. So we sent 17 bytes to the server, and we should be good to go. We just entered that command. Now we want to actually get to it and see where it is. Remember that our S object is kind of like uh, an invisible pointer to segments of the text that we're seeing on our SSH connection. So what we can do here is we can actually get over to where we have output. You remember probably in the API overview that we looked at way, way back in the, the first video that this is actually expecting different things and different outputs from the program that we're running. That's why the module is called pexpect or pexpect, because we expect different things. We can find them with regular expressions and uh, strings and that sort of thing. Now, that's kind of hard to do sometimes, right? Because if you're connecting to a server you've never been on before, you might not know what to expect. Like, what output will you get back? Of course, I know that, yeah, we'll get the subscribe output back since we're calling Echo, and I know how that works. But this is for learning purposes and for educational tutorial stuff. In the real world, it might not be that easy. So interestingly enough, and kind of fortunately, because we're working with SSH, we know that we're always going to see a prompt right after we find, uh, right after we enter a command. Like every time you're in a terminal and you enter he echo hello or something, the same prompt you had before is going to be returned back at, back at you after you see the output of the command. So if we run s.prompt, this is a function here, that matches the shell prompt. It's interesting because it's a little it's a little bit of a shortcut in the expect method that we I was just talking about and you saw online. What it does is it will return true if the shell prompt was matched, like if we were able if we were able to find it, and it will return false if a timeout was raised. Now if a timeout's raised, then uh, well, I don't know, we're, we're probably screwed. We got an exception. If we didn't, tr if we didn't do any exception handling, it'll throw up when we get an error. So anyway, let's just try it and run it. You'll notice the argument is optional, so we can just go ahead and run this. So it uh, <laughs> it should uh, return either 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 true or false um, if it finds the prompt, right? Uh, why isn't that happening? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to restart the shell. Control F6 is what I did to do that. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more as to why that happened, what went wrong there. Uh, I'll do that as I type through all this stuff. Hopefully I don't screw up. But notice that what we entered in the send command, that was actually, of course, the command that we wanted to run. But kind of consider it as what you typed right from the keyboard, right? You're entering this command. You're typing it in. And that's literally what you see on the screen. That's the command that you want to enter. You have to enter that command. Why am I saying that so much? Well, notice that we didn't enter the command. You didn't press the enter key. You didn't get the new line. <laughs> so when we actually want to send something to the server, when we want to send a command, we have to include 
that new line at the very, very end. That's what actually tells us, oh, we ran the command. Now the prompt will come back up. So if I type in s.prompt now, hey, we get true. We actually found the prompt. So now we want to be able to find the output. Like, what did we see? What, what more can we find in the actual program, right? In SSH, in its output. So this is done by some interesting methods, or not, not even methods, but variables that allow us to kind of find where we are. So I'll actually check this out in the documentation with help for the object. So I'm going to pause it and find it right now. Okay, cool, here we go. I think this is under the expect functions uh, documentation. Yeah, here it is. So the expect function is, like I said, what we were talking about beforehand that we saw on online and what we would normally use to find the output once we've entered something to the server and actually to SSH. So once it's found something, once a match has been found, it's going to create the instances and the attributes before and after and match. Now you can read all this data in those variables before and after, but you read the things that were set before you found the match, which is in this case our prompt, and after with after. Of course, matched is in match, so prompt is kind of what we're looking for in this case. So prompt is, is like it said in the function description, kind of a shortcut for all this. Like, uh, like it told us, it's kind of a neat caveat to um, the expect function. It's a, it's a sh more sh more of a shortcut to the expect method than anything else. But let's check it out. Let's try s dot before because obviously anything before our current prompt will include the command output and the command itself, what we actually send to the server. Let's check it out. Hey, there we are. If I print this out so we actually interpret those new line characters, it tells us echo subscribe, which is the command that we ran, and then the output subscribe. And of course the new line character and carriage return feed. So it's interesting, right, because we sent in a new line and we sent in, we, we received anyway, a carriage return with it. Why did that happen? So this is happening because of certain operating system specific things on the server. And I'll, I'll use this as, a, as kind of a segue and a transition again to talk about another function that is part of our S object. And of course it's very similar to send, but it's actually send line. And it's kind of cool because here I'll, I'll show you the description. It wraps the send function, which of course sends the string s, like we like the same thing that s that send function had done. It sends it to our SSH child process, but it uses os dot linesep automatically appended to it. So it's pretty much giving our new line character right at the very end for us, but it's specific to the operating system or the platform that the target server or what you're connected to with SSH is running. It returns a number of bytes written just like our send function did, but like I told you, like I told you, it's passing in that uh, little function for us. So, I'm sorry, not little function, our, our our new line character. So if I echo please this time, if I s dot prompt, get us there. If I do s dot before, now you'll see echo please with the character return and the new line character and the character return and the new line character. Now the character return is included even though like if we when we ran s.send echo hey new line s.prompt s.before the character return the character feed is also part of it because that's how it works on that operating system. That's it's os.linesep. If I import os I can show you os.linesep, line separator, and for us, it's only a new line character. But for that server on Bandit, on over the wire, it might be the character return and the new line. So that's an interesting thing to know and uh, kind of denote there. So here's some things that I want to talk about, right? It's interesting that you have to always type in prompt, you always have to run that function and check out before to get the output of every command that you pass in. It might be worthwhile to write a string that, uh, uh, sorry, write a script, the <laughs> write a script that actually runs this function for you. Like there's a function that all this is included in. Once you just like 
you know, you could have like a, a send command function. And then within that function, it'll call, obviously, send line or send, whichever one you want to use, and prompt, and then read before. And notice that the before prompt, or at least the before variable, always includes the command that you sent to it. But it's, of course, going to be separated by our os.linesep. So maybe, maybe you could invoke Python on the other, on the like target machine that you're looking at, get the value of os.linesep, and then use that in your script, part of the function, that will determine, okay, this first slice of s.before with the linesep as the delimiter, we know that's the command. Everything after it, well, we know that's going to be the output of the command. So, if you have something that, of course, that has multiple lines, that way you'll actually retrieve all of it without being confused as to where does your command start, where does your command end, where does the command output start, where does the command output end, and that sort of thing. So, food for thought, it might be a good idea to write a script or a function that can get the prompt function call done for you and look at stop before and manipulate it so that you get the command output that you want to see. But I'll leave that to you. <laughs> I wanted to show you how you can use this stuff with PXSSH, what kind of you need to know to be able to get it to work in a manageable way. So hopefully you've been following along and can understand it, and hopefully it wasn't too tedious kind of following me through this. So uh, this is all I really want to show you for this video. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Thank you for watching. Um, if you like this video, well, hey, maybe like the video. If you have any comments for me or constructive criticism, I love constructive criticism. I need to know what, what can I improve, what can I fix, what more can I give you guys. Maybe leave a comment. And uh, if you're feeling generous, subscribe. You know I'd love that. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.